We are now going to take a brief look at the operation of the GPS constellation. The GPS constellation of satellites has been called an ongoing relativity experiment that demonstrates general and special relativity time dilation effects. All GPS satellites send out a simultaneous pulse every second. A receiver on the ground receives pulses from a few satellites. By solving a set of equations with data provided by the satellites, the receiver can determine its location in 3D and time. For the system to work, the satellite clocks are kept synchronized with a master clock at the ground station, and all clocks must run at the same rate. If the clocks do not run at the same rate, then maintaining synchronization is not possible. Since the satellites are moving as they orbit Earth, they experience time dilation effects that are different than those for the ground station. We'll do a quick analysis of the time dilation present for satellites and the ground station. We'll look at just one satellite for simplicity. First, we'll determine the satellite orbital speed as it goes around Earth. This results in special relativity time dilation effects as given by this formula. The notation dilated time versus non-dilated time is used to make it easy to follow. We also have to consider gravitational time dilation effects due to Earth's presence. These are given by a similar formula, but it uses Earth's escape velocity. What is the direction of the escape velocity? Some scientists claim that the escape velocity is in any direction away from Earth, and that may very well work for escaping from Earth, but that is not what the math says. This is the formula for the escape velocity. It is derived by integrating the formula for gravitational acceleration. This r and this r are the same, therefore the escape velocity vector takes the same direction as the radius of the orbit to the satellite. We can now plot the vector for gravitational time dilations. Notice that this vector can also be interpreted as if the satellite were moving in a direction away from Earth, just like the orbiting motion. There is no change in the distance from the satellite to Earth. It is more of a pretend motion. Since the time dilation vectors are perpendicular to each other, we can use the Pythagorean theorem to calculate the total time dilations for the satellite. We also calculate the time dilations for the GPS ground station, following the same process taking into account Earth's rotational speed. By doing these calculations, we can determine that the satellite and ground station do not experience the same time dilation effects, and if we used the same clock for the satellite and the ground station, they would diverge by 38 microseconds every 24 hours, which would result in an error in position of several miles. This is clearly not acceptable. GPS satellite clocks are designed to run a little bit slower on Earth, so they speed up and run at the same rate as the ground station's clock once they are in orbit. Let's take a closer look at gravitational time dilation vectors. What if this is not pretend motion? What if this is real motion? The satellite's distance to Earth is not changing if the satellite is experiencing vertical motion, and since all motion is relative to space itself, then we have to conclude that space is moving through the satellite, in this case, space is moving, that is, falling, towards Earth. Let's look at the implications of this assumption. What we call gravitational time dilation becomes special relativity time dilation. It means that all time dilation is a consequence of motion through space. What we experience as gravitational acceleration effects are due to space accelerating through us as it falls to Earth and dragging all objects along with it. Scientists make a distinction between inertial mass and gravitational mass, where inertial mass is an object's resistance to being accelerated by a force, and gravitational mass measures the gravitational force exerted by an object. With this assumption, there is no difference between the two. It is all inertial mass. The equivalence principle becomes an identity. There is no difference between a rocket accelerating through space and space accelerating through a stationary rocket on the ground. It also means that gravity is not a force of nature, which makes it compatible with quantum theory, and gravitons are not needed. The effect of space falling to Earth only extends to that area of space where Earth's gravitational field is dominant. This means that it would form a bubble around Earth. The bubble is similar to magnetic fields around a magnet, Far away from Earth, the Sun's gravitational field would form a bubble around the whole solar system. This assumption is not without some problems, and they will be addressed later on. For now, let's see how this plays out. 
Let's go back to the GPS constellation. Let's say that we want to synchronize the GPS constellation with a satellite orbiting the Sun in the same orbit as Earth. In this case, we would add time dilation vectors the same way that we did for the GPS satellites to determine the time dilation effect experienced by the satellite orbiting the Sun. These vectors would be much larger, as the orbiting velocity and gravitational time dilation effects are also bigger. What do we do with the GPS satellites? Do we add the same vectors too? After all, the GPS satellites orbit the Sun along with Earth. You can see how this would cause some serious problems. The GPS time dilation effects would not be constant, because the resulting magnitude of the vectors would not be constant. The GPS constellation would not be synchronized anymore and would result in positioning errors. We will pause here and return to address this situation at a later time.